Last year, I was one of seven winners of the Frame Awards 2022. I came in at sixth place. It was a unique website concept for my personal brand built with big and bold scroll animation between each section to tell my story in a compelling way. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my process on putting the site together. Now, submissions for Frame Awards 2023 is on the horizon, ending on the 31st of January, 2023, one week from now. So it's not too late to perhaps apply some of the stuff you learned from this video, but also I believe this video can serve for all year long awards, such as their monthly award or even Frame Awards 2024. So let's dive in. Just before I get into it, if you're new to this channel, I'm Omar Farouk, designer turned startup founder. And in this channel, I share all of my learnings around building delightful products and trying my best to achieve breakthrough growth. So if you're interested in this, then go ahead and click subscribe to stay notified. Now, when Framer announced their awards for 2022, the brief was to create a personal blog or portfolio site. It was perfect timing since I was already planning to start developing my personal brand anyway. So I rallied my team to help me with this project. Now, I'm sure that most designers will have some sort of process to mood board and collect ideas and inspiration for their design. However, we really wanted this site to be a case study for our UI UX design subscription service, Collabify, so we really took on a full-on branding process ourselves. This process is a fusion of our own, mixed in with the core framework, which we learned from Jose Caballer at The Future. And it looks like this. Step one, brand attributes exercise. We go through a simple exercise to establish the attributes of the brand. This takes around one hour. Now this is divided into three sessions. And in the first session, you spend three minutes for each brand attribute, brain dumping all the keywords possible that comes to mind for that particular attribute. The brand attributes includes culture, customers, voice, feeling, impact, and X factor. Now it's best to do this with a group of different minds so you don't fall into biases. After you have your attributes filled in with options, it's time to reset the clock. Again, three minutes on each brand attribute, this time voting for the top three keywords that aligns closest to your brand attribute. Third time's no doubt a charm, we rewind this process again, this time voting the top one keyword for each brand attribute. Now the important part of this exercise is to keep an open mind and don't overthink. Anything goes. At the same time, don't be too shallow with your descriptions. For example, high quality or great is way too generic. This was a very unique process to our typical branding projects since we're talking about my personal brand here and the team were literally discussing my personality. Now, step number two, we dive into customer profiles. Based on the brand attributes, we can guide a discussion towards setting up to two to three user profiles to get clarity on the target. It was clear that I have two types of user personas. Number one is an early stage entrepreneur of a tech startup. This individual we thought would be based in UK like me, be a high performer, lots of curiosity, lots of responsibility and commitments, huge ambition. And overall, he's struggling with work-life balance leading to potential burnout. I also attract a lot of international audiences. So the second persona was a multidisciplinary designer from India with some freelance work experience under his belt. Again, this individual has big ambitions, but struggling to break free from the difficult low budget client work. He's lost in doing way too much leading to again, burnout. So the common themes of my personas are ambition and burnout. After finishing our user personas, the initial brand workshop is out of the way. So we have all the info we need and now we can begin the fun stuff, which is designing mood boards and stylescapes. We prefer to start from a mood board, which allows us to pull inspirations unapologetically into a canvas. We create two to three thematic mood boards to get a sense of direction and style. Our creative director, Nico, put together two options. Both were overall quite bold, but one had more muted colors, whereas the second option had much more vibrant color combinations. Since my brand attributes had a lot of positive words such as passion and persistence, and for example, my X factor was being multidisciplinary. So we went for option two to try out a multi-dimensional color palette that was flexible, a bit like my character. I mean, people often say that I'm a chameleon in that I can adjust to any situation or work with a diverse group of people. From here, we go straight into stylescaping. Again, most other brand studios use stylescaping as more of a structured version of a mood board. But our approach here is to really try to move towards a final presentation of the brand itself. In fact, our Stylescape layouts gives you an opportunity to really absorb the brand in one experience. And this makes it super easy to iterate on to fine tune before creating the final deliverables. After a few iterations, this was the final Stylescape. A broad color palette with the primary colors being orange to evoke that positive energy of passion and persistence. It also has a strong techie feeling behind it. To break it up, we then combine the application of the orange with a range of secondary and tertiary colors, blue, yellow, green, paper, white, and black. All of these have significance in what they mean to the brand, but more than anything, the application itself breaks up the seriousness of the orange acting alone and creates a warm, inviting feeling when used across various materials. Once we signed this off, we went on to creating a simple brand guideline. Right, so we're done with branding. This is the part we've been waiting for, which is creating the Framer website. Me and Nico worked together to create some initial concepts. 
but we both felt that these were nothing different from a lot of basic personal blogs and portfolio sites. Sure, we were happy with the branding overall and the theme was definitely coming through, but we really wanted to share the story of my personal brand in a compelling way. Therefore, we felt that having to simply scroll through basic sections was just not going to cut it. As we kept brainstorming, we leaned towards this idea of creating a very powerful journey-driven approach by using intricate section animations as you scroll. So we started mock up these ideas on Figma. We did this by first breaking down my story into big slides, starting with a big splash screen as a quick greeting. The second slide expands my greeting into a brief intro about me. We then expanded further on what I'm currently working on. We then continued onwards to dive into further details. This included a few dedicated sections like a bit about me, social proof, my latest content, and a final call to action. We then created a unique navigation menu that anchored to the left side of the site to quick scroll through any of the sections. Finally, we tied all of this together with a simple prototype. Now the tricky part was to get this exact same experience on Framer. Now Framer has tons of rich animation features. So the first approach I thought of was using scroll transform effects, which they had recently released at the time. But we found that this approach had many limitations as we needed super accurate timing and positions of each of the components. As cool as transform effects are, they typically work with a few properties through trial and error. And it's almost impossible to get absolute positions in the result. Going back to Figma, we had created each slide one by one and every slide was a duplicate of the previous. We then used Figma Smart Animate feature by adjusting each slide's layers to the positions we wanted them to progressively animate in and then finally connecting the dots in the prototype to get this effect. Now, the only way we we're able to achieve this on Framer is through interactive components. Now, from what I knew at the time, components were used in a very specific situation, such as clicks and hovers of buttons, menus, and other aesthetic interactions. At that time, I had never seen anything done before on Framer in terms of what we were trying to achieve. Luckily, after speaking to the Framer team, they pointed me towards scroll variants. Of course, with Framer scroll variants, we can create each slide in a single component, just like we did in Figma. This was a super arduous process, as unlike Figma, Framer child duplicated components are all connected to the primary component. So any changes made to the primary component carries over to all the child components, unless those properties are disconnected by having their own values. So slide by slide, I had to hack through it all over a few days. And finally, to make it a functional website, we use scroll variants on my web page with the components set to 100% viewport height. We then divided the height of the page into different sections with frames and set scroll IDs. After that, we set the scroll variance effect on my main component to switch to a specific component variant when scrolling to those various sections. We finally added the navigation menu on the top set to fix and anchor to the left top right. We then linked each menu item to the scroll section IDs so that it auto scrolls to the relevant sections on click. And once I was done, it worked like a charm. We do live in a mobile first world. So in no way was I going to submit my site without a fully functional mobile version that has the same impact as desktop. Now we did this by mocking up some flat layouts on Figma to give me a reference point. I then had to duplicate the main framer component and resize it to fit on mobile. This wasn't easy at all, but it was worth it as you can see. After submitting the site, I was waiting eagerly for the winner's announcement. I mean, I did put in a lot of work into it, but even if I wasn't going to win, I still enjoyed the process and that's key. But I was super grateful to see my face on the announcement post. I came in at sixth place amongst other killer contenders, amongst hundreds of submissions, which honestly myself and the team are very proud of. And the best part was we learned some cool tricks on Framer that we've applied to many projects down the year. Now, if you want me to create a deep dive tutorial on Framer for powerful scroll variants, let me know in the comments section. Also, I'm definitely open to recreating this website design as a generic template. If this is something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll dig some of these recommendations. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. See you soon and never stop building.